Okay, so perspective floor plans elevations. What's next, you ask? Sections. A section is a floor plan sideways. By this, I mean that a floor plan cuts through a space from the top view, but a section cuts through a space from the side view. Just as a floor plan, a section is an abstraction of space. You never experience a building from a section's perspective. Therefore, these drawings are meant to inform the design, whereas that is looking at relationships between spaces or showcasing technical details. Now, how do we use sections to help our design? On my last video, I said how, when coming up with a design, you should always go back and forth between floor plans and elevations. Well, in reality, you should go through multiple kinds of drawings, including sections. So how do we use them to help inform our design? Sections are perfect to look for space relationships within the building, and between the building and its context. On my building, I needed to create a clear division between my private residential spaces and my public offices and commercial spaces. At the same time, people who are guests of residents need to know where the residences are, so they don't feel lost. But how do I create a relationship between a space that is so separated from the other? Well, by making the in-between space speak the same language as a destination. I want this transition in space to attract only a certain group of people who are looking for a more private program, which brings me to the second use. Now, I have a ton of people on a very public hall. It is meant to be public because I want to attract a high number of people into the building to make use of the commercial areas that surround that hall. Now, how do I transition a selected number of people to come from a very public space to a more private space? Well, by sequence. Now here, what I tend to do is that I put myself in the position of someone who comes to my building for the very first time and wants to go to a residence. What would I need to do in order to make it painfully obvious that this is where I need to go? Well, because my final destination is a secluded space, then I'm going to look for a space that feels a little bit more secluded. But how do I know that it's not just a backdoor for services? Well, ironically, by making it somewhat inviting. Here, I can use part of my program too, like a reception desk, to let people know that from here on, they are on a more private area. because you're cutting through walls, floors, and ceilings, this is a perfect place to showcase technical drawings such as walls and roof assemblies. Detailed drawings are section drawings, but to a much smaller scale. Of course, you can also showcase this on a floor plan. The advantage with the sections though, is that you can see a direct relationship between the elements of the wall and the elements above and below it, such as floors and ceilings. Now, remember, all these principles apply to the overall design process. This means that when you are designing your floor plans and elevations, also think about space relationships, sequences, and even assemblies. Section drawings, though, are especially good when exploring these principles. Okay, so perfect. You have done all your design exploration through your sections. But what do I show when I present my design? How do I produce attractive drawings that inform about my design approach and decisions? Well, here are a few tips that have helped me. Now, I'm not talking about conventional scale here. You should always scale all your drawings. Sections though, especially on a bigger project, tend to be very large. Therefore, the larger area of the section, the least amount of detail but the smaller area of section, the more detail you can add. Typically, sections that cover the largest areas are called building sections, and sections that cover the smallest areas are detailed sections. Now that you have selected the area of your section, you can determine how much detail you can incorporate into your drawings. Now, this really depends on the size that you choose. So I'm going to show you a big scale or building section on this video because it is the most commonly used. The way I tackle big sections is by sticking with the basics first and see how much more information I can add from it. 
make sure you keep in mind the actual print or display size of your drawing. Don't get caught up on details if people need a magnifying glass to see them. Now, this doesn't mean that your sections are to be mediocre. Remember, like any other presentation drawing, you are creating an art piece. Think of ways that you can make your sections look attractive, even if it only has a couple of lines. Usually on your section, you want to show how two spaces connect. On my building, that means doing a section cut through the core, showcasing at least one elevator shaft or some stairs. That way people can understand how the spaces relate and how the building functions as a whole. If you're doing a smaller project, like a house, perhaps a section through the stairs or something similar works as well. Now, because my section is very broad, I don't really have a way to show actual assemblies. For that, I need a wall section or a detail section. But what I can do is use thickness to show which walls are bearing and which are non-bearing. For example, notice how my core walls are thicker than the rest of the walls, which makes it easier for someone to see where the core is located. So in conclusion, sections are a great tool to help your design ideas flourish and become better. But they are also great to showcase areas of your design that aren't visible with floor plans and elevations. If you've been watching my videos, you have probably noticed a pattern. We started this channel with a tutorial of how to make a simple perspective drawing. Then we walked through the three main types of conventional drawings on architecture, floor plans, elevations, and now sections. These four drawings are essential for all your design presentations and design process. These four drawings are, in my opinion, the fundamental drawings of architecture. All the other architectural drawings are an evolution or combination of these four main types of drawings. So stay tuned, because in the next weeks we're going to dive into more ways we can explore and present our design. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe, that way you can help my channel grow. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know exactly when my next video is going to come up. Stay safe.